Hello everybody, my name is Katemo, welcome back for another video of NHL 21 Franchise Mode. We're back uh, for some more boys. Obviously, we're going to continue this series. Uh, we're going to come up to the third season here. Obviously, right now, we don't have too much to do in the offseason. We're just going to move on straight away from the free agency. I already, already went ahead and uh, chose all the free agents I wanted to go after, boys. Uh, so you're going to see in a minute right here. Let's do uh, UFAs. I'll show you guys who everybody that I went for. So I went right here for center players in total, of course. I needed a center, so I went for Ryan Strom right here. Uh, playmaker, of course, you guys already know by now. I choose only playmakers and snipers. Power forwards are fine, but playmakers and snipers are the main thing that I'm going to go after right here. So he's got some good stats. He had the best uh, stats of all of them, uh, really. So uh, we've got him on our side. Uh, do I have any other guy? Don't, don't think so. Not on that side. Uh, left wing position. We've got Olofsson for the left wing boys. So he's going to come back, I believe. Was he playing for us? No, he wasn't playing for us. So I'm going to just sign him completely. I chose him over anybody else, boys, over Yarncroc. Uh, it felt like he was a better uh, option than Yarncroc. So uh, I chose him. And uh, Fosberg is just going to have to go to another team, boys. It's unfortunate for him. He's still an exact elite. But the problem is, he's just not good enough. He's just not good enough, boys. Uh, we've got also right wing position. Rackle, right? Rab um, uh, Rickard Rackle. Uh, we're going to get him as a, a playmaker for the right wing position, boys. So this is going to be our player. Defensive-wise, I got Klingberg. So we're going to go after Clint Bird, of course, adding up to our defense right here, moving it up. 88 overall def uh, offensive defenseman and a two-way defenseman in Giordano. So we're going to go both for these two guys. Uh, Goalie-wise, I went uh, for uh, Old B in the backup situation. I could have went for Fleury, boys, but I want Fleury to play starter. I mean, he's got that starter uh, uh, option, so he might as well play uh, in that position. I'm just going to keep Old B in there. Old B is a good veteran. Uh, he can play very good for us in the actual uh, season as a backup, I'm pretty sure. So let's get him and hopefully he's going to do a better job than Georgiev, that's for sure. So uh, that's pretty much that. Coaching wise, uh, did I go for somebody? I don't even know uh, if I went for somebody right here. Uh, yes, I did. All right, so I went for Peluso, boys. He's, I'm going to try and get him as our AHL goalie coach. Don't know if it's going to work. But he's got A of teaching is the best option right now that we've got. So let's hope that everybody accepts my offers and everything. And uh, let's advance the days. Let's see if uh, we're going to get everybody that we want to get. So first class coach. There we go. We got our uh, goalie coach. Uh, B, uh, B overall. So that's fantastic. Uh, Matt Roy. So uh, depth uh, the demon, I guess. Brandon Holby. He's coming in, boys. Ryan Strom. All right, so we got these guys. We got our center and a goalie. There we go. Mark Giordano, Rackel, Klingberg, Olofsson. Everybody decided to join me, I think. Yeah, that's. I think that's everybody, boys. Everybody accepted. So now we're getting ready. Uh, we're ready to move on to the actual season. We're going to look at the roster really quick, boys. All right, so I read, read the preseason, boys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rosters. Uh, if we you gotta make any changes or anything, uh, we'll see really quick. We've got Malkin at eight. Obviously, he dropped, so that's not too good for us. He went from a 90 to an 87, so he dropped by three overall. So that is not good. He still has that exact elite, so I'm still very confident in him. He's just not gonna be as dominant as he could be. I don't know what made him drop so fast, but uh, I, at least I got him. That's all that matters. So we don't have anybody in the system for him. We've got Panarin, Lafreniere, Olsen, and Teravainen. Everybody's in there. Lafreniere is now an 86 overall. So his high elite potential alone is allowing him to actually grow by himself. Even though he's having not that good of a seasons, he's still able to really like uh, go up there. So that's fun. That's fun for me, I guess. Brendan Lemieux, everybody. So we don't have anybody else. Uh, right wing position, we've got Kako, Kasha, Rakol, and Bushnevich. So we got really an in depth team, boys. No real studs, but an in depth uh, team. And uh, Simmons is gonna be obviously our depth uh, forward right here. We've got uh, Gauthier that's ready to play for us. So Julien Gauthier is ready to play for us. Uh, this year is an 80, 81 overall, boys. 
Now that's the question right here. Do we uh, should we bring him up, boys, or should we wait uh, wait it out, or maybe trade him to another team? I don't know, cause he's ready to play for us, and uh, an 81 overall is a top medium top six. I should probably uh, play him. It depends on what he's a uh, power forward, right? So depends on uh, if I have space for him. Don't think I do. Yeah, I don't think I do have space for a power forward. So I'll keep him in the minors. Uh, we'll let him grow in there. Uh, defensive side, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got everybody in there. Klingberg still an 88, so that's perfect. Uh, we're good on that side, and we don't have anybody to bring up. Uh, Shishturkin, 88 overall. So he did not grow, boys, uh, this year. He did not grow at all. He stayed the same, uh, basically. That's uh, that's a shame. He got injured a lot too. That uh, doesn't help uh, at all. We've got OB still in 84, so he didn't drop or anything. So we're good on that. All right, so maybe the only option that we could look into is possibly eventually having Gossier play, bringing him up uh, to play with us. But I, I don't know, boys. So let me just do best lines. And right now I'm going to uh, uh, edit the lineups, boys. See you once it's uh, it's done. All right, boys, my lineups are done. Uh, it's going to be a weird one for sure. Uh, first uh, thing, first time I actually tried to do the lineups, it, it was looking pretty good. I had like Kako up in there or plus three like last year and stuff. But I, as soon as I looked it up, I looked at the familiar stats, individual stats and everything. And I think I want to make something a bit weirder, but different. And I think it might work. Now, if it doesn't work, I'll just throw, we'll go back to the original uh, plans that I had set up. But uh, I'm going to put Kasha on the first line with Malkin and Panarin, boys. Teravainen on the second line with Johansson and Rackle. And on the third line, it's going to be Olsen, Ryan Strom, and Kako. Now, Kako uh, goes from a first round, uh, a first line to a third liner. But uh, the problem is, is the way I'm looking at it is the offensive awareness first for the player. Then I'm looking at the discipline. So Rakol and Kako are both have the same amount of offensive awareness, but Rakol's got that discipline way up there and Kako doesn't have a lot of discipline. So the guys that are not disciplined are not going to play as much. So that creates less penalty and stuff like that and more five on five for us i think that's the best option not is going to be playing on the fourth line boys doesn't matter to me if discipline is all the way low actually i gotta i gotta look into stuff really quick uh, 91 overall yeah they're all 91 of offensive awareness they're all the same except their main difference is i'm going up I get after that by discipline and terravine is the better option boys so there we go lafrenia is being uh, pushed to a fourth liner boys with Eric Stahl, though, he's playing with Eric Stahl and he's playing with uh, Bushnevich. It's a playmaker, playmaker, sniper combo. So it's going to work anyways. It's going to work out, boys. Defensive-wise, Buffalgan and Klimberg. We've got Miller and uh, Barry. Giordano and Truba, boys. So that's a pretty good... Uh, that's going to work out just fine for us. And we've got Shishturkin and Olby in the net. Of course, AHL-wise, you can look at uh, what it looks like right here. Uh, Budens, which is our main top prospect, medium elite player, right? We're uh, growing him up uh, big time. He's coming up. He's going to be playing on the third line uh, this year. And uh, we got all these players right here as well that might uh, be ready uh, soon enough. You can see the goalies, Malik and Garano right here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we're done here. I'm ready to uh, start the simulation up, boys. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. I'm going to simulate until the regular season right here. So I'll see you guys in a minute. All right. So we simulated the entire uh, preseason right here. Let's take a look at what it looked like uh, real quick. Just to have a, an avant-garde uh, goo of, I guess, of uh, what it uh, looked like. It's going to look like for us. It looks like it's a good simulation. Now it's the preseason. So it's not the real rosters and anything. But it's a, it's a good looking preseason. Only one loss. So I'm excited, boys. We might have something under our hand. We never know. So let's simulate the first 10 games here if and see if my strategy, my new uh, strategy is going to work out or not. So 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So all the way up to the Calgary Flames at the 
uh, the end of the uh, month of October, basically. We start off with a win against uh, Toronto, another win against Colorado. Uh, there, uh, can we win against Columbus? We sure do. So we start off with a three-game winning streak. Then we end up losing against the Arizona Coyotes. We lose against the defending Stanley Cup champions as well, the Pan uh, Panthers. So I'm, I'm fine with that. But uh, there we go. We got another win against Colorado boys. As long as our record is high up there. Now we are in our third season. And under my GM, as GM uh, at my third season, I'm, at, I'm going in there like I'm supposed to be actually uh, be a contender at this point. So I'm supposed to have a good team. Uh, first and second year, you don't expect much out of the GM because you're starting with basically nothing. But now it's my third year, so my team should be looking like this right here. Eight and two to for my first 10 games, boys. So really good simulation to start it off. Exactly what I want to see. This is exactly what I wanted to see right here. Our best player is Johansson on the second line. 80, 80 overall player, boys, but it doesn't matter. It's the uh, stats that you don't normally look at that matter uh, matters the most. Uh, so where are we in our division right now? 16 points, very first in our division. Well, we're tied up with the Sabres, but uh, we just got to keep doing our thing. Let's take a look really quick at our team overall. Now, first line, how is it doing? First line is doing all right. It's doing just fine. Now, they're not producing. They're not picking up points. But if my team is winning, I want my team to win over uh, any time of the way. I'm going to pick my team uh, winning over individual stats, boys. That's for sure. Tara Vinen, there we go. Uh, second line is doing very well. The second line is doing fantastic. Third line is doing great as well. The third line is producing, boys. And Kako's got eight points and 10 games played. And he's playing on the third line. So he's doing just fine. The fourth line's working out as well. Uh, now Lafreniere is only have four points. But keep in mind he's playing an uh, average of nine minutes per uh, per uh, periods. Uh, or nine minutes uh, per games I guess. So he's not playing that much. He's not really playing that great. He's not playing a lot. So we, uh, we got to give him a, a break a little bit on that part. Uh, let's keep it going because we had a good simulation. I don't even want to look at the team stats. Uh, we, As long as we're playing good, I'm not going to change everything. All right, so I went ahead and changed the uh, settings a little bit. I don't know why, but the the settings were put at, at uh, medium shot frequency for some reason. I wanted it at high the entire time, but it was at medium. So I want my players to be able to have more chances, right? So... The scoring, uh, the scoring frequency still at medium, but the shots are at high, boys. So we're gonna keep it like that. I prefer it that way. Uh, two, four, uh, six, eight, and ten, so all the way up to the Buffalo Sabers game right here, right in the middle of November. Let's see if we can't get uh, those winning streaks going, boys. We got a big time winning streak going right now. There we go. Keep it going. Keep scoring, boys. Keep, uh, keep, uh, keep winning. I love it. Yeah, I don't need to change anything. As long as we're winning games like these, we're getting these big-time um, winning streaks going on as we get a loss, but in overtime, so we get an extra point out of that. Another extra point. I'm fine with losses as long as you get these extra points, my guys. Go ahead. Oh, my God. There's a third loss in a row, though. Now, we're starting to go a little bit of a losing streak. We win 7-3 to three against uh, Los Angeles. There we go. Don't allow too many lose uh, losses here. There we go. Get bounce back up, boys. You got this. That's what I like to see. We're getting a lot of wins right now. Yeah, there we go. A lot of wins. So we're in a four-game winning streak right now. We went all the way right there. What were we? So two, four, six, eight, eight games in a row. Where uh, so we went. We won eight games in a row. We lost three, but then we went into another four-game winning streak. So. Uh, we're a streaky uh, team, it looks like. We're really doing well, though. Really doing well. Uh, last uh, uh, last simulation, 7-1-2. and two, So, perfect. We're just going to keep it moving, boys. I've got... Uh, we are actually best team of the league entirely right now at 32 points, boys. We're doing so well. Our best player, Tara Vinen, 22 points, boys. In the second line and 20, 20 games played. Uh, I still want to take a look at my players, see if any, anything's working out for them. It's working out. Uh, they're they're producing. See, Panarin's going up. His production's going up a little bit. 17 points now. 
Uh, Malkin, uh, 21 points in 20 games played. So he's doing great. Kasha, of course. Yeah, he's doing all right. He's doing just fine. Uh, now, the problem is his two snipers and the playmaker. That's why they're not producing as much as they should. But I don't have a choice but to put it that way because that's just the that's the main part. That's the only way that I see fit for my team to uh, to work it out properly. Tara Vinen, uh, Johansson's doing good. Rackle's doing good. That second line is doing is filthy. Third line is doing just fine. There we go. Just fine for the third line. Fourth line, perfect. It's doing fine as well. Seven points in only in uh, 20 games played for Lafreniere boys. Don't worry about it though. Uh, he's getting these. A time on ice. I'm pretty sure he's getting. Uh, he's gonna get that time on ice now, because Lafreniere doesn't get a lot of time on ice. Of that, uh, I might need to up it up for Kako and Lafreniere. So I might need to actually bring him. Okay, so no, he's playing already. He's already playing on the uh, on the power play, so he's fine. And Kako's playing as well. Yeah, they're both playing on the power play, so I shouldn't need to worry too much about that. Lafreniere in there. So maybe if I bring up Lafreniere actually here. And instead of Terra Vinen right here, let's bring up Kako. There we go. Just making sure that they do get their chances here to play uh, quite a lot. And penalty kill wise, I think we're doing just fine. Penalty kill. I don't want to change anything right here. I think we're good, boys. Let's uh, let's keep it moving. I don't need to change anything. We're uh, producing. We're uh, having a lot of good time right here. So I want to keep it moving a uh, big time. So we're going to continue simming all the way until the Vancouver Canucks game at the 7th of uh, 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 December, I guess. We start off with a two uh, two wins in a row. Perfect. We just got to keep winning, boys. That put us at six wins in a row before losing to the Buffalo Sabres. But we get another win right here. Now, we need as we win as much, po uh, uh, much game as possible against the Buffalo Sabres, ex uh, especially because... They are our main uh, rivals right now in our division, it looks like. Now, if that is two losses in a row right here. Three losses in a row in regulation. All right, that's interesting. So we're getting regulation losses here. Can we bounce back up? We sure can against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. We win a game. There we go. Montreal, we win against them in a shootout as well. So 4 nothing. Can we we, we got to win the last game? We do. We, we do win the last game against... Um, New Jersey Devils. So that's a three uh, game uh, wins in a row right here. Put us uh, putting us at six and four for the last ten games. Malkin is now our best player. Thirty four points in thirty games played, boys. Uh, I like to see that. We're still the best team of our of the league and of our division. So we're doing just fine. It looks like the Sabers are dropping a little bit, which puts the Capitals as our main target, our main rivals for the division. We don't need to worry too much about anybody just yet. Um, we almost had half the season done already and we are like great. We're doing so good. Now the Vancouver Canucks are a dangerous team. 8 and 2, 0 oh and 2 for the last 10 games. They're uh, wrecking ships up. Yeah, they're the second best team of the league. So they're dangerous as well. Just got to keep it moving though, boys. Uh, how much, now that I gave up, uh, I gave Kako and Lafrania some uh, more time on ice. Yeah, they're not, they don't have that much time on ice anyways. It seems like we're not getting a lot of power plays probably because they're not getting that much more of uh, of times. But I don't really care too much. What I care about is uh, my team producing and my team winning. As long as my team is winning, I'm I'm okay with everything. I'm okay with the way, uh, the, the, the way it's working out. I don't want to change anything again. Let's not look at the strategies. As long as we are above uh, 500, I'm just fine as it is. 2, 4, uh, 6, 8, and 10. So all the way up to the Pittsburgh Penguins game, uh, boys. We're going to be at half the season done during that point. There's a regulation. Uh, there's a, an actual shootout loss. So there's a, an extra point for us at least. And it was against Vegas Golden Knights as well. Another shootout loss. So we might want to upgrade our shootout. Uh, change that up a little bit. It seems like it's not working out too much for us. Uh, there's finally a win against um, the Red Wings and a win against Chicago. So there we go. We needed that because we had three uh, losses in a row right there. There we go. Bounce back up with a three, win three wins in a row. Can we win against Arizona? We I'm pretty sure we can. They're a tweener team. Yeah, there we go. Two, another two wins in a row. 
that's a four game winning streak right here can um, can we keep it moving against Ottawa we sure can right yep there's another win boys five wins in a row and there's a loss against um, New Jersey right there so we got five wins so that was pretty much a five uh five five hundred right no actually actually it's pretty good because it was still a six two and two oh there we go so I got a next to a win that I didn't uh, see or anything but uh, there it is right there boys 40 games played we're to have the season done and uh, we're still doing fantastic production wise Malkin's going up he's just individual stats wise he's just going up so he's producing more and more he's got 50 points now in 40 games played fantastic uh, we're still the very best team actually we're not the best team of the league anymore uh, somehow the Canucks are just doing so great they're they're, they're passing us even though we're ke we keep playing great just the Canucks are playing better than us for, somehow boys they got one more point than us we're basically fighting it off uh, with them for the President's Trophy right now the Blues are not far behind but I don't think they're gonna get there unless they start wrecking shit up have the season done now I think it's time to look at the stats uh, properly definitely we got like yeah look at that first line the first line is doing so great boys plus 13 and everything it's crazy I think I figured out a new cheat boys new cheat code right here uh, there we go second lines doing fantastic plus minus wise uh, third line is the weak link it looks like yeah the fourth line is doing great so uh, third line is the weak link right now it looks like can't really change anything my team's playing great so I, I don't want to change anything they're gonna do they're gonna have to uh, produce uh, the, the way they're supposed to they're gonna have to just do their thing I guess I can't really change anything on that part Buffalo gun and everything yeah everybody's doing great boys everybody's just doing their part right here I didn't have a single injury so far as well let's take a go look at the goalies goalie wise Olby's got seven wins in nine games played he's having four backup goaltender uh, an average game uh, an average season he's doing just fine and Shishturkin's having a great season as well. Another good season for Shishturkin. He's, he's just a great goalie. He's just a great goalie for us, boys. And Gauthier hasn't grown at all just yet. Still an 81 overall. Uh, now, if he starts growing to an 83, I'm not. I'm going to have no choice but to play him with the team. But for now, I'm just going to keep him uh, in the minors, right? Try and grow him as much as possible. Bodin, boys, went from a 69 to uh 73 overall so he's growing very fast he's truly growing very fast he's going to be a stud for us even though he's not doing great i mean you can see minus nine with this lineup not doing good but he's doing so great like uh he's just got that natural growth going on i guess and that's helping him out tremendously he's going to be a great player for us uh that's uh, for them sure uh team stats wise let's take a look at them Goals for per game, we are the best goal scoring team, of course, the best offensive team. We are the uh, second best defensive team as well. Power play, we've got the best power play and we have uh, one, the second best penalty kill. So yeah, that explains a lot, boys. That explains why we're uh, doing so great. It just explains the entire thing right there. Let's keep it moving. I'm not changing anything, of course. Uh, keep it rolling right here. 10, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, I believe, right here. So all the way up to the Calgary Flames gain. We're going to move up to the next year, boys. Brand new year. So that's going to be as good as a year as the other one. Uh, now, we start off with a lose against uh, uh, Penguins, but a win against uh, the Ottawa Senators, I believe it was. Uh, there's a loss in shootout. But we, that's an extra point. That's just an extra point. So I'm going to I'm gonna get that extra point, boys. No problem. There's another extra point against Dallas right there. A uh, win against uh, Detroit. There we go. Let's keep the wins going. We're having such a fantastic season, boys. I'm happy. Like, that's exactly the type of season I wanted. Now, we got to be careful about these losses. Because even though they're shootout losses, that's the one thing I, I forgot about looking into, too. The shootout losses. Because we're losing a lot in shootouts. That's a, a lot of extra wins that we could have if I man, if I was modifying it a little bit and stuff, right? So I, I, I'm going to need to look into that because that's a lot of uh, potential wins right there that we're get, uh, throwing away in shootouts. We got to uh, watch out for that. We're getting these extra points, but 
I mean, that's three losses in shootout right there. I don't like to, uh, to see that. Even though we keep doing great, though, simulation-wise overall, 6-1-3 in the last 10 games, 59 points for Malkin, boys. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I mean, 60, 73 points. Yeah, we're still the second best team of the uh, of the league right here. We're already in the playoffs by now. Uh, unless we mess it up big time, which I don't think we will. We're already made it to the playoffs pretty much, boys. Uh, we, it's just a matter of uh, can we win the president's trophy. For that, we would need to actually uh, produce like crazy. We would need to not lose as many games in uh, shootouts or something. These extra points, boys. So let's go into extras. We're going to change shootout. Uh, actually, extra attacker, right? These are the extra attackers as well. I might want to put uh, Pan, uh, actually Lafreniere and and uh, Kako in there. Let me see really quick. How much time on ice do they have? Nine minutes. Yeah, it's not quite enough for him to grow. It's enough for Kako to grow to have 13 minutes on ice. I don't think it, it, it's enough for uh, Lafreniere though. So I might want to give him an extra uh, slot right there. So instead of Panarin, I'm going to put uh, Lafreniere in there. He's going to get the extra, boys. Uh, scratched. We're good. Okay, so yeah, I do want to change the shootout. So not working too well on the shootout. Uh, can we actually see shootout strain, uh, uh, like uh, uh, things, right? Is there stats for this? Yeah, I don't see any stats for shootouts, boys. I sh they should be in there. That should be a thing as well as the shootout stats. So I don't like the fact that Teravine is in there. First thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to put Lafreniere in there. First off, uh, we need to have Lafreniere in there. Uh, Panarin first. Sure, why not? Uh, Lafreniere second. Klingberg can be third. Uh, Malkin actually is going to be third. I need Malkin to be third. Klingberg in there. And instead of Kasha, we're going to put Kako. We're going to trust in the young uh, younglings, boys. The young ones are going to be the one uh, we're going to put all of our trust in for the shootouts. Let's see if that changes anything. We start winning in shootout. Don't know if we're uh, modifying that's going to help out or anything, but we'll see. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. So all the way up to the Los Angeles Kings game. We're going to be at the trade deadline right there, boys. We're moving up pretty fast. There's a... A big time win against Calgary Flames, five nothing. Another shootout for uh, Shishturk and boys, and we've got that um, that advantage as well, where we have an actual good goaltender, a great goaltender for us, as you can see. As we keep winning games, we got a goaltender that could shut it down. He's gonna have some interesting nights like this one, where he gives up six goals. Overall, we lose in overtime, but we're still managing to score many goals. Uh, when uh, he can't do the job or anything, uh, we're there to protect him. So we got an overall really like strong team, boys. The main important thing about this game is you don't want to have just one or two or three players that are 90 overalls. What you want to have is an in-depth team like mine where you got a bunch of 86s and 85s all across the lineups and it create that in-depth defensive team and offensive team. Everybody, line, every line can score goals. That's all you want, boys. You don't want just one line to score because if that one line is not producing, then what's the point, right? So we have a not, we had another great simulation right here. Uh, eight zero oh, and two, one of our best ones. Uh, it's as uh, as uh, good as the very first simulation we had. So sixty games played. We're getting ready for the actual trade deadline. To be honest. I don't even know if I want to change anything. I don't even know if I want to go for a trade this year because we're doing so good. We're some of the things so great, boys. 91 points. Well above the uh, the uh, the Canucks right now. They fell apart. They continue to do good, but we I guess we just started to play so great, boys. Now we're well above everybody else. We're in the playoffs officially, boys. You can already say 91 points. You can forget about it. In the division we are, we're in the playoffs guaranteed. Now we just got to keep it going and uh, go for the President's Trophy all together. That would be uh, fantastic for us. Uh, next wise, I don't have anything to change. Uh, what, I want, uh, what I do want to do is uh, we got to make our due diligence as well anyways, right? Because we're at the trade deadline. Here comes the part where we're going to have to see if there's any potential trades we could do. To upgrade our team, I don't think there is any that I want to do personally. 
Uh, I mean, we could trade somebody like Barry. He's got a, a really high up value right now. Tristan ba uh, Tyson Barry, 86 overall. We could upgrade him for like a big time stud D man. But I'm scared that if I change him up, like he's doing great for us boys. I'm scared that if I change him up uh, for a uh, defense uh, defenseman, that's probably higher up, but uh, he's playing worse, you know? I'm scared of that. So we got all these potentials. Uh, a lot of players that have a lot of potential to be traded this year because we're doing so great, boys. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of potentials here. But I don't know if I want to make any, a move or anything. I don't know if there's anything I want to change uh, to my team. They're doing so great right now. I mean, we're the President's Trophy lead right now. Defensive-wise, you can see there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of move I can do. A lot of moves. Uh, Goalie-wise, uh, I'm fine with the two goaltenders that I have. I'm just fine as it is. Yeah, I'm going to keep that uh, as it is right now. So I'm, I could probably get some draft picks as well. Anything, really. We're going to make our due diligence right here. We're going to take a look into go, uh, uh, defensive position. Uh, as you can see, uh, Boudin as well, right? Boudin. He's 78 overall now. He's actually a 78 overall, boys. He went from uh, he went from 10 overalls during one season, half uh, well, a uh, third of a fourth of a season, I guess. So that's crazy. He's growing so fast. He's gonna be a 90 overall in no time, boys. <laughs> in no time, he's gonna be a 90 overall. Plus, you just saw that he's got a 97 of discipline. That means that guy is gonna play in the first line like in no time. He's better, in my opinion, than Kako and Lafreniere. He's just a better overall player. He's you're gonna sh he's gonna show it to you guys in in a, no time whatsoever. Now the only one I see really that I want to um, that would be worth to trade is Tyson Berry. He's doing so good, but at the same time he's got that value all the way up. We could definitely trade him up for a potential great uh, defenseman and stuff. So let's take a look really quick. We got a lot of options here, boys, for a better D man. Especially in the 87s overall, we got some people like Letan and um, Reb Weber. A lot of good options, but the problem is Weber, I'm not going to take him because he's a top six, exact top six, so he's going to drop real fast. Latin I can still get for him, uh, go for him. He's an 87 overall, so one overall more, but it's a risk. Uh, even though I could get literally a first round pick with him, uh, alongside of him, it's a risk. I might as well just go for an, an elite player if I, I if I want to go for something. Unless there's anything else. Nope, there's nothing else really that interesting. I could go for uh, a prospect like uh, Lilligran or Anafin, right? I could go for one of these two. Which, uh, how good are, are they doing right now? They're doing pretty good, both of them. Uh, I think uh, Anafin's better. Yeah, is he better? Well, he's got a better offensive awareness, but Lilligren's pretty close and he's got that discipline as well. So I think I would want to go for Lilligren, right? So yeah, I think I would want to go for Lilligren. Now, let's take a look if we have any other options. We've got Ristolainen as well, you know, another good option, 87 overall, 80 of discipline. Uh, we got a lot of options in the 90s as well. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to go for this high up. But I think in the 90, in the 90 mark, I could go for it. So maybe a Sergachev or something. There we go. A 90 overall offensive awareness. We've got Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, really great across the board, boys. I think I want to go for Dahlin, boys. He's great across the board. He's got uh, both stats right there. I want to go for uh, Dahlin. Let's try him out. Let's try to go for Dahlin right there. Uh, if I can trade Baron... Uh, Tyson Barry for uh, Rasmus Dahlin, boys. I'll do it. I'll do it uh, without a shadow of a doubt. It's a, it's a good trade uh, for me. Now, Barry is a right D, right? So I, wa I want to make sure that, uh, yeah, no, Dahlin is a left D. So that's the main difference right here. That's the main difficult part is, is he's a left D. I want to go for a right D right here. So let's not do that then. I need a right D right now. So that's what I need. So let's be a little bit more precise with that, I guess. Hold on, let's go back right here. So is there an actual right D that I could go for? I mean, I could go for a Petriangelo, maybe? Yeah, he seems like a good one. Petriangelo seems like a good option, but is there a prospect, a natural prospect I could go for? Uh, not really. Seth Jones right here. 
He's got a, a good, yeah, good some good stats right here. Eggblood. Uh, we've got McEv McAvoy. Uh, McAvoy, which is good. He's got worse stats than Jones, though, but he can still grow. So, you know what? McAvoy could be a good one. Kale McCarr. Better, uh, better defenseman than McCoy, uh, McAvoy. Yeah, uh, let's go for Kel McCarr. Now, he's a right D. So, we should be good with him, right? Yeah. That's what I want, boys. I need a right D. Uh, that's all I need right now. So, let's go. Tyson Barry, you're getting in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to do the trade just uh, straight away like that. I'm going to have to give them something in return. I can give them uh, no problem like a Nazarov or something in return. So, Nazarov and Barry for Kel McCarr. Let's see if that goes through, boys. Rejected. Okay, it's so not quite good enough. Uh, let's see if uh, another top six player is March. It's going to do the trick. Not quite. I might have to give them a, um, an actual draft pick, boys. I think I will. So let's get these guys two prospects and a third round pick. A third round pick for uh, Kel McCarr, boys. Not enough. I'm not getting high, as high as a second round pick. I'm willing to give you the second round. Two uh, prospects and Tyson Barry for Kel McCarr. Let's go, buddy. Okay, so I'm not going. Uh, I'm not going for Kel McCarr. Forget about it. It's not happening, boys. So they don't want me to. Uh, they don't want to trade away, uh, trade him away, which is understandable. Uh, I'm not going for him if they don't want to trade him. I might have to go a little bit lower then. Uh, a little bit lower in the chart. Seems like this might not work out. Uh, I I guess I could go for uh, Ristolainen. He's 28 years of age. He's a right D. He's just fine. In my opinion, he's just fine. 87 overall. Uh, let's just take a look really quick at um, what the stats for Tyson Berry is, though. Because if Tyson Berry's got better stats... Uh, let me see really quick. 88 overall and 82 of discipline. So even though it's kind of very similar... One is elite. That the main difference is one is elite, and the other one is a top four. That doesn't matter too much for me. So I don't think I'm gonna make any trades defensive wise. We got the defensemen we need. Uh, we already have. We're fine on that part. Any actual fours that we might want to get, I guess, like really interesting uh, ones. Well, there's one, uh, Crosby. We could go for Crosby. We already know we have Malkin, right? So we could go for Sidney Crosby, boys. We could try and get him, literally. He would be a great, another great addition to the team. Uh, I don't know who we could trade him for, but uh, we could go for him. There's another one that's actually, there we go. There's an elite player right here. Uh, Backstrom would be better option than Crosby. Yeah, Backstrom would be a better option than Crosby at this point. And uh, it would do a lot better of a job right here, so... Uh, there we go. We've got Malkin already with us, though. Uh, Genzel. We're good on that part. Uh, yeah, no. Well, Genzel actually for a left winger could be great. And I did say I wanted to potentially trade away like a Lafreniere or something like that. But Lafreniere is doing just fine where he is. I want to give him chances, right? I want to give him chances to make his proof in the league with us and stuff. So I'm not going to trade him for nothing. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we can try our luck with Backstrom. Let's try a bunch of stuff, boys. Let's try a bunch of stuff. See if we uh, if it's going to work out or not. So, uh, Backstrom, let's take a look really quick. Do we have anybody that's interesting enough? We could uh, potentially trade away Strom for, I guess, uh, Backstrom, right? But we don't have that high hop of, of things. So, I'm not going to trade for a center, I guess. Uh, left wing, we got some good options. Like uh, Terra Vinen, for example. We could trade him away uh, quite literally. I want to keep these two guys. So uh, Terra Vinen, we could trade him away uh, for a good left winger or something like that. Or a better left winger. So we could trade him away for uh, for Genzel, I guess. We could do that. Let, uh, let's find out pretty quick. I think Genzel with uh, Pittsburgh, right? I think that's where he was. Yeah. So Genzel, 86 overall. Hold on. Compared to an 85. Now, 85 to an 86 is not that big of a jump, though. It's not a, a good enough jump, in my opinion. Uh, does he have good stats? Better stats than Teravine and overall? Teravine is 81, 87. 81, 83. So, he doesn't have that good of stats. So, not going uh, going for that. So, we can forget about left wing position. 
right wing uh we don't have kasha we could upgrade kasha to an uh for at least an 88 overall or something we could upgrade him now let's take a look uh is there any options for kasha maybe upgrading him there's no real option i don't see any options boys so i'm not making any trades uh we're fine i don't need to make any trades whatsoever this year it's one of the few years i'm not gonna make anything uh make any moves boys because we're doing so good I mean, we're producing great. I could have Crosby in our team or something, Backstrom. I'm not going to go for these guys. I'm going to let the other teams have fun with them, I guess, because I'm not going to worry about it. I'm, my team is doing fantastic as it is. I don't need to change nothing about the roster. So uh, let's keep moving. We're going to get past uh, the trade deadline right here. And we're going to take a look at the tr uh, major trades that might have happened and stuff like that. So... A win against uh, Los Angeles, a lose, a loss against uh, uh, Winnipeg. Let's keep it moving, boys. Let's keep winning games right here. We're short, way above everybody else in terms of President's uh, Trophy. There we go. Keep winning, boys. I like that quite a lot. Let's continue simming. And uh, yeah, there we go. Let's get past uh, the trade deadline, get into the Winnie Minnesota Wild game. We're going to take a look at every single trade right here. All right, let's go take a look at the trades, boys, real quick. So we got a first round pick going to Montreal for Jonathan Drouin. So Jonathan Drouin is going to Buffalo, boys. Got traded away by Montreal. Verashek's going to Tampa Bay in exchange for a couple of draft picks and uh, Graton for some reason. First round pick going to Pittsburgh for Jared McCann. Okay, they got a first round pick for him. That's interesting. And at Athanasiu. All right. Oh, we got anybody here? Colton Pereco going to. Uh, the Capitals boys playing with, um, I guess, Ovechkin right there. And we've got Troy Stature. That's pretty much it. First round pick. Bra uh, Brady Chen or, or uh, I think that's his name and stuff like that. James Van Riesdijk, Gosh Tishbeer and Opus Lindblom. All three of them are going to Dallas. All right. First round pick. A bunch of first rounds pick getting traded. Victor Ras going to uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Adam Larson going to uh, Los Angeles. Brendan Gallagher going to Buffalo. So Montreal traded both Jonathan Drouin and Gallagher for, uh, to the Buffalo Sabres, boys. They're both going there in exchange. Buffalo basically gave them two first rounders. That's crazy. And they've got Jack Quinn as well. So they gave them Jack Quinn. So Montreal's got a big time prospect as well. Interesting move right there. They're going for a rebuild. Uh, Edmonton's got Varlamov. Interesting. Uh, Elvis going to Boston. Uh, Bergeron's going to and the, Bergeron and the Brass are going to uh, Chicago boys they got traded away Tyler Toffoli going to uh, Columbus uh, Blue Jackets so he's going to play with a bunch of other uh, former uh, Montreal uh, players I guess Montreal's getting a bunch of draft picks from that so it looks like Montreal's really going for that uh, uh, big time rebuild right there uh, shame I guess it's a real shame Robbie Fabry, Brent Burns going to uh, the Detroit Red Wings. Interesting. Matt Dumba going to Va uh, Vancouver Canucks. A lot of big trades, boys. A lot of major trades happening right here. Especially Montreal moved up a lot. I think Bergevin did a lot of moves right there. Uh, in the hopes of re going for the big time rebuild. I don't know if the fans would love that. If it was the case in real life. Don't I think they would, would be pretty pissed off. If we were, uh, went ahead and traded every single uh, player we had in our team. But, you know, it's part of the game, I guess. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and uh, 10, I believe. So all the way up to the Islanders game right here. We're going to be at 70 games played. Uh, let's uh, keep it moving. Keep winning games. See, this is why I didn't need to make any trades. We're, uh, we keep uh, winning anyways. Uh, even when against these teams that make those trades, right? We're going to just keep winning. Uh, we're doing just fine as it is. Now, the Buffalo Sabres are winning against us, though. So, they're getting these shootouts and overtime wins against us. doesn't matter, though. We're winning against every single other team in the league. So, we're pretty much eye, eye up in there. A record of 7-1-2 and two in the last 10 games. 107 points for us. Uh, well above everybody else. Uh, I think we got the President's Trophy, boys. I think we got it. I mean... Unless we really are really bad for the last, like we have a horrible record for the last 10, uh, 12 games remaining, which I don't think it's going to happen. It's very unlikely. We uh, 
basically won the president's trophy already so it's great Malkin's got 87 points 44 games uh, goals boys he might have the 50 if he uh starts scoring he's got uh he only needs like six more goals he's got the 50 goals so let's go Malkin I believe in you buddy go ahead do your thing let's keep it moving boys I don't need to change anything I just wanted to take a look at uh all the stats and stuff I don't need to make any modifications or anything uh two four six eight and ten uh, we're actually going to simulate the rest of the season right here. Why not, right? Simulate the rest of the season right here. Keep it going, boys. We got a win against the uh, Islanders, a loss against Boston. Are we going to win against uh, Winnipeg? We sure do. We uh, Another win. There we go. That's two wins in a row. Three wins in a row. Uh, another win right there against uh, Ottawa. We sure do. Four wins in a row, boys. Now we get an injury at the last second. Really? get into a four game winning streak right here at the end of the season and we get an injury our very first injury of the season as well and it's at the end of it so Allison gets injured I guess at the very end of the season our very first injury boys uh, Win Simmons didn't have to play at all but all of a sudden he comes in boys here he comes he's got to play so he's playing on the uh, left wing uh, I think uh, it's time for Lafreniere to go up there, boys. It looks like Lafreniere is moving up. He's going to be playing with Kako and Strom for a time being. And uh, let's see. Extras. Three on three. It looks like it's going to be uh, Simmons. Actually, three on three, right? Yeah, that explains one of the other things as well. We had Panarin and Malkin. Kind of want to have... Uh, actually, I want to have Lafreniere... Uh, no, no, no. I want to have Lafreniere in there. And I want to have Kako. Capo Caco should be the other one playing with uh, Lafreniere. I want to have these two uh, rookies playing a lot more. There we go. They're getting some time on ice, boys. Extra time on ice right here. All right, let's keep it moving. Don't know for how long Wayne Simmons going to have to be the replacement right here. We got a, 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 a 8 to 1 loss against Toronto. After that, uh, we basically dominate the other teams. Uh, we lose and shoot out again uh, against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Olsen's already back uh, from injury. What did Wade Simmons do? For three games played, he had one game, uh, one goal, and a minus one. So not too good, but uh, he did he did uh, his part. He did just fine, boys. Let's go back to our former lines right here. Let's go, boys. We got this. Oh, my God. There's a, a loss. Yeah, we start. Okay, so we finished off the season uh, with um, basically a two, a three-game lo uh, three losing streak. So not too good. Uh, but uh, it's fine. I mean, we had a fantastic season. Everybody played their part. Uh, I think, yeah, we got the President's Trophy, boys. We ended up being the best team of our uh, of the entire league. So that is fantastic for us. You can already see our best player was Malkin, 99 points, 50 games to go, uh, 50 goals. So he got the 50 goals. Good for him, man. I'm happy about that. I'm really happy. Let's take a look at the entire stats for, uh, for uh, I guess, the, the players and stuff. So our best player of the uh, of the team, I guess, is Malkin. 50 goals score. Uh, big time score right there. Really great for him. Now, it drops out a lot after that. Uh, Panarin uh, right there with 26 goals. He usually is the one to score goals. But this time around, he uh, gave up all the goals to Malkin right here. So after that, basically our best player is Malkin. 99 points. Panarin, 79 points. Now, I think... It's a better season than last year, right? Yeah, it's a better season than last year. Still not good enough, but uh, you know it's fine. We're, we had such a great season team-wise that I'm I'm just I'm fine with the, how the players played. They they played great. Plus 35. I mean, you can't get better than that as a lineup. Kasha on the first line, boy, 65 65 points. Kako had a great season. He played the entire year on the third line, boys, and he had 64 points in 82 games played. This guy is a stud. He's a real stud. He's a real good player, boys. He could have had probably his best season uh, so far, but he had his second best uh, or third best, I guess, be just because he played lower than the usual, right? He is so used to play on the first line. And now playing on the third line is like drop in terms of pro like uh, production. But he's still playing great. That that's a great season for me in terms of the third liner. That's can't have better than that. Tara Vinen, good. Uh, Tyson Berry boys. And here I was wanting to trade him. He's got 55 uh, points, boys. Our best D man by far. Klinberg, 48 points. Uh, Olufsen did great. 
Lafreniere had 41 points, 17 goals in uh, 82 games played in the fourth line, boys. So he played the entire year on the fourth line and he had 41 points. So uh, he played definitely a lot better than the pre two previous years. So I'm confident uh, with uh, the amount of games, he, uh, the amount of time he had, I think he's going to grow. I think he's going to grow. He had enough time on ice to grow and stuff like that. Miller, Truba, all these guys. Uh, defenseman wise, we got that goalie. Uh, Shishturkin got 50, uh, 45 wins, I should say. 45 wins, boys. Probably his best season of his career. I think it is. I think it is, right? Hold on. Let's take a look real quick. Yeah, it's his best season of his career by far. Uh, you would argue probably 20, uh, the very first season we had with him was his best, but he didn't have. Um, didn't have uh, as many wins, boys. Now he had a lot of wins. So this is by far, his, for me, his best season of his uh, career right there. Although he had 12 shootouts in the first season. Damn, that's, he's such a great uh, the, uh, goalie. Now, uh, OB played like absolute trash. Uh, he got the wins, but uh, he didn't do too well, boys. Actually, I don't want to drop out really quick. I want to see at the entire league. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's take a look at the entire league now. Who was the best player of the leagues and stuff like that? It looks like I already have my answers. Uh, best scorer and best player of the league this year was Evgeny Malkin. So we had the very best player, boys, on our team. That's very perfect. Matthews, 49 goals. Perfect. That's really good. And, uh, of course, we've got Malkin, 99 points. 98 points for Cal Connor. Sigay, 85 85 for uh, Tavares, Godreau 85 right there, Limbo, uh, uh, Lindholm, all right, Jack Eichel right there in there as well, uh, Fosberg, so Philip Fosberg, boys, with the Dallas Stars doing a lot better with them than he's doing with, he did with us, right, with us he was pretty disappointing, uh, for, uh, with him, he's got a team, so, you know, dropped him up, I wanted to have a good season, and he had one with the Dallas Stars, so I'm happy about that. Happy for him, I guess. Uh, there we go. That's all the other players. Again, Ovechkin, the likes of Ovechkin and Crosby are going to struggle. I don't know why. Maybe their coach is not good enough. They don't have a good coach or something. They're not producing as much as they should be producing. You know, It's a shame, really. It really is. Where's Crosby? I mean, look at that. 76 points. He should be doing a lot more. Should be producing a lot better, boys. It's not normal he's, got, he's getting those types of seasons right here. That's not normal at all. That's uh, very abnormal, but what are you going to do, really? Cut Kanemi had, uh, had a really great season. Defense. Uh, let's take a look. Carlson, once again, 78 points. How many points in his career is that right now? Uh, 843 points. This guy is a goddamn stud. He's a monster. Goddamn, he's a great defenseman. The other Carlson. So both Carlson's are the best uh, 2D men of the league. Sergachev, Letty. Uh, Yossi, Eiskinen, uh, Dowdy, Barry up in there in the top 15 boys. And uh, uh, Quinton Hughes, boys. There it is. And goalie-wise, best goalie of the year by far, yeah, I would say is either Shishturkin or Elibach. They're pretty similar. Uh, Elibach could very well win the Vizina, but uh, personally, I would give it to Shishturkin for sure. So uh, there it is. And uh, rookie season, uh, rookie skaters, boys. Uh, Caden Pelly, medium elite uh, uh, player. Where's the uh, that franchise player? There he is, Zetterberg boys. Franchise 87 overall uh, player. Didn't even finish up first, so don't know, boys. He doesn't have the points. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it right here. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys uh, for the next one. Keep it easy.